So on this side, you can see we have pretty much a gaping hole. What's going on everybody and welcome back. So we are getting back to work on the Corvette. Or I have been working on it the whole time, more like getting back to filming. Sometimes I get just so amped up and I just start tearing stuff apart. I don't think to film. I know maybe you guys want to see it or it could make a good video because honestly I can't find any videos online about dash removal on a C4. The later years, the earlier years I found some stuff um, up, up to 89, 83 to 89, but like um, 90 to 96, I don't really see much on there. So it's a different dash, things are a little bit different, but I'll show you guys what I've done so far and just give you the rundown. I already started taking it apart, but I'm kind of peeling back each layer. If you're looking to pull the whole dash as a unit, this isn't the video for you. Maybe it'll help you understand the inner workings of the dash and you could figure out how to do that, but for me, there's like mouse damage, so I'm just trying to gut the whole car, and I prefer to peel it back layer by layer, and I wanna have all the pieces and clean every individual piece, and put it all back together nice and clean so it doesn't smell, and uh, I can actually, you know, uh, be in the car without being sick. Uh, anyway, so I'll show you guys all the stuff that I took apart. So I got, obviously, knee bolster. I mean, and, and all this stuff comes apart relatively easily, um, I got parts everywhere guys. So these are just my screws. I'm not one for putting screws where they should go. You could label everything and put them in bags, but I just kind of throw them in a big pile and I usually figure it out. Um, <laughs> hopefully that's the case here. A lot of screws. I never taken a dash out at home before. It's kind of a huge job, but yeah, like I said, I've always been one to just throw everything like that. And if we miss a couple screws here and there, it'll, it'll be fine. It's a 30 year old car. It's gonna rattle. I know it's a Corvette, but it, these things are known for rattles. It is what it is, guys. It's just part of it. We're making a car that was destined for the Crusher, uh, a nice car again, and it may have some rattles. I'll do what I can, and maybe one day, if I decide I can get crazy, I'll go through and you could fabric tape everything, and you can make everything rattle proof, but that's just not what I'm trying to do. I mean, the, you know, the, the interior is, it's in good shape, but it's still damaged. Like, you can see, like, it was so over-tightened. It's all dimpled. You know, it's, it's, it, needs, it needs to just be cleaned and put back together and it'll be enjoyed for what it is uh, and not a perfect car, but it'll be clean, a clean car. And that's what I care about. But anyway, got the dash pad out, which is doable with the dash in the car. So it's pretty, pretty easy. You got this vent pops up from the front and then pulls out and then you get these two sevens here and then you can get, um, you gotta take out the passenger knee bolster and there's some other bolts here behind the vents. These were kind of a pain, but uh, my stuff was already broken. A lot of stuff was already broken on this car. So this is like hot glued, the panel that was here. There's like a little panel here that you gotta pry off. Couldn't tell you how it comes off because mine just came off with like some sticky hot glue, <laughs> which is fine. Um, I'll just glue it back. Um, and if you break stuff, you can use epoxy or hot glue or it is what it is, you guys. You know, it, if you break something on a 30 year old car, uh, it's just, it's gonna happen. These cars are just really old and they're not meant to be taken apart like this uh, 30 years later, you know, stuff's cracked. There's a lot of stuff that's already broken, but for the most part, things are gonna hang in there. And uh, like I said, they might rattle a little bit, but not a big deal. So we got all the vents pulled out. There's like some T, or T10s or T15s. They're really tiny um, in the vents on both sides. And then these Phillips are really hard to get to in the cluster. I got the column out. Um, a trick about the column when you're taking that out, uh, just make sure that you take the gas pedal bolts out because that gets in the way and you can't come off of the bolt, the stud sticking out of the, uh, the firewall unless you get the gas pedal out of this area here. So you take the gas pedal out, comes right out, a little bit rotted, definitely had some water leakage going on in there. Um, and then obviously these two bolts here and then the eye shaft uh, in the engine bay. You got to take off and slide it slide it off, wiggle it back and forth and slide it. Probably could have hit it um, with a hammer chisel. But yeah, so that's kind of the main stuff so far. And the console, there are hidden bolts. This is the vent piece on the dash. And the console has hidden bolts underneath this felt here. You gotta peel the felt up to reveal the four sevens for the uh, console piece. And yeah, that's pretty much most of the difficult stuff so far. I'll show you guys inside the car, I know it's getting pretty long-winded, but the car looks really good, guys. I mean, 
it definitely has paint imperfections. I'm almost positive it was repainted. Um, but, I mean, God. On camera, you guys aren't even going to see any of those imperfections. Like, it looks flawless on the camera. So, that's just the way it is. The camera always, you know, it can deceive. But, I'm just peeling back the layers. So, we got the dash pad off. Now I'm working on the plastic structure, so I've been taking some pictures, and this video will serve as a reference if I have trouble with it going back together, um, just where all these wires go, and for you guys too. Maybe if you're looking for something that's supposed to be somewhere, um, and you're like, oh, I can't figure out where that's routed, because you got all the wires everywhere, um, the, all these connectors, this is where they hang. These are all the ones that go to the column over here, all this stuff. And this, this fuse thing is mounted up here somehow. And this is, I forget what that's for, but climate controls we just took out of here. And I ended up disconnecting the cable from the blower side after removing the dash pad as opposed to from the back. So we left it hooked on to the actual HVAC controls here. And it ends up routing uh, all the way in there. I'll save the little e-clip or whatever it's not an e-clip but it's like one of those one-time use things it's just it looks just like this one here that guy so anyway yeah Let's see what else can i tell you um yeah we got another connector down in here and a couple more that i think got pulled back in there but should be able to figure out most of this stuff guys um but it's just nice to have the reference so i'll do a little on the other side too so with this side, we've got um, all the plastic structures hanging. The fuse block came out from the inside. There's some screws that come into the back of these vents over here. And you gotta take those out, one, two. And then, uh, I don't know about, uh, there's not one there. That one goes that way. And then up there on the top, there's some here uh, that go into those vents too. So there's, you know, a bunch of things. This bracket here, you know, it's gotta come off. There's a couple of tens in here. And a couple of tens up here with one ten up here, and those all unbolt this this guy here, which when you pull this out it allows you to get the fuse block out. So that's just how I did that. And we got a lot of wires hanging down here. I'm gonna try to leave most of this stuff plugged in if I can, and just leave the harness in the car if I can. I don't really know how these how this thing's gonna go. Um, so I'm just gonna pull the plastic structure, and then if I can pull the ductwork off after that. And not really have to pull the dash uh, that might be what I do I might leave the heater box in there see if I can clean it in the car that way I don't have to drain the coolant and the uh, refrigerant which would be sweet I doubt there's any AC charge in it I'm sure it's got a leak everything else is wrong with this thing but almost felt um, yeah so good stuff and what I wanted to show you guys uh, I'll save that for a different video, but there's, there's pretty much a hole in the floor over here. I gotta make sure these bolts don't fall out of the hole in the floor. See right here? It's like totally smashed. So we gotta fix that. I'm looking into that. And yeah, so I'm gonna keep chugging along here. And we'll try to just pick away at this and I'll show you what uh, what goes on. Here's another look at that uh, nesting material that's behind the dash. So this is something that you totally, I'm trying to avoid the glare here. This is something you totally would never be able to see. I need like a polarized lens on there. Um, but you you would never see that uh, with the dash pad on and you wouldn't know. And it's, it's all hairy and nasty. So when you have a rodent infested car like this, you really got to just go everywhere. You got to take the whole dash out and everything because that's always going to be in there. And that stuff smells. You know, all the uh, the droppings, it stinks. So you got to get it out of there. As nasty as it is, as, as much work as it is, it's worth it in my opinion because otherwise this car is unusable to me. I, I don't like nasty mouse infested cars. It just stinks. I hate the smell. So we're going to get it rid of it. <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah. All right, so I pulled the vents out, and it doesn't look like they were in the vents, funny enough. They were everywhere else, but <laughs> not in the vents. Which I guess is good, maybe they're not in the heater box either. 
Um, although I'm still going to try to get down to the heater box and I might take it apart from the inside if I can. But I did pull out the plastic piece here. So the tough thing is just going to be remembering uh, what went out in what order. I'm going to try to leave it in this order here so I know like what went in. Um, so basically I know obviously that that's behind that but this came out this little console piece after that. Um, so it's just you know what do I have to put back in first to then put back in because you don't want to put a, a layer in wrong because then you got to take something back apart. That's the worst part is you know taking something back apart that you already put together that drives me crazy. So <laughs> we're going to try to avoid that. No guarantees because um, this is tricky but short of filming myself doing the whole thing um, I got uh, all the wires hanging and pretty much removed it uh, there was a huge piece of nest here like just I mean massive um, massive nest so I got all that out that was under the dash pad and yeah I'm gonna tidy up the wires right now and see if I can remove this this rubber insulator here it's all due I don't know if I can save it I'm gonna try to but I think that's going to be part of my um, part of my fixing the floor situation. I got to remove that because the hole in the floor is underneath this mat, so we'll be able to assess the damage. And uh, I think I might just you know go to this point. I, I guess I did pull the whole dash out. That's just how this system is. I didn't pull the heater box out. That's pretty much the only thing I'm leaving. So you know, a lot of this stuff was already cracked. Like these bolts, I didn't even take out because like they're already cracked. So, I may have to take this out and epoxy that back to the plastic piece of the dash. Um, so I'm sure this thing rattled and, you know, it, it is what it is. Some stuff's already busted for the most part. <laughs> These cars just get broken, like, somebody probably bumped into the dash and it cracked all the pieces. Like, it is what it is. So, we're just going through it. And, uh, yeah. So next step, I'm probably going to take off this little pipe right here. And then, I think I want to try to bungee this, this... Uh, these wires up there out of my way so I can like I said remove this mat so I'm gonna get to work on that all right so I got a few more pieces out uh, along with that insulator I don't know it seems like they didn't really make their way under that so I may be able to it, it's kind of brittle so I may be able to use it uh, now the other thing I'm worried about is like the uh, the firewall dampening here I, I just feel like it's a there's a chance they got behind there, you know, because I can see up here they were on it. Doesn't seem like they're behind it, but I don't know. There's some staining down there. I'd really like to get the whole engine insulator out of there, which would be, I think I'd have to pull the heater box and the, pull the back half too, because that's my, my thing right now is I'm trying to decide if I should pull the outer section of the heater case off. I guess maybe I will to see what it looks like in there. Because if I want to take the whole heater box off, I'm going to have to disconnect the AC lines and the heater core lines. And I don't know if I want to go that route. I will if I have to, but if I don't have to. But I, I want to get the engine insulator out of there because it, maybe they made it behind there. And I don't want to, I wouldn't want to put it back together and not have gone that far and I'm, I'm right here now, you know. So, I don't know. So I know I've been going back and forth about what I gotta do, but I gotta take the whole dash out guys, I just gotta do it. I'm all the way here, I want that engine insulator out, so I decided I would pull the heater core lines, at least for tonight, let this thing drain, and so I got, I used a pick as a, as a hose hook, and we're draining into a bucket down here, trying to capture all of it, just gonna try to keep it positioned well so i'll make a mess um hopefully i can achieve that so i'm trying to pull this hose off here and i ended up taking a pick that is i bent it i'll show you guys but basically i bent it so that i could get it in so otherwise the picks are just too short, so I have to see. I bent the pick, but it's nice and long, so you can get in here 
I just kind of go around because these brass fittings on these heater cores of these uh, outlet pipes can be really malleable and you can mess it up. So I really wanted to just try to be careful here and I'm going to put the camera down so I can be gentle with this and uh, just pull that line off and this whole jug is pretty, pretty much going to leak out. Um, but it is what it is, we'll have to bleed the cooling system but I'm going to pull that off so I can get the heater core out from the inside and I'll be able to clean the heater core and the box and then we'll probably do the evap core as well. Um, I just got to see how that comes out once I get the uh, heater core out. Alright, so I think I'm done for tonight, guys. I got this, uh, got the, uh, what do you call it out? I got the side of the heater case off, and I got the, uh, the, uh, the core, the heater core, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm getting tired, it's late. I got the heater core out, and, uh, yeah, there's definitely droppings in there. Yeah. So they were in the heater box, too, which, you know, figures... I figured uh, they're everywhere <laughs> so I just got to get this whole heater box out of here and then we should be we should be home free we got some other stuff to play with over there but I'll probably just leave the harness dangling like this and I'm just gonna go through and clean this thing once I get uh, the heater box out. I should be able to get most of the engine insulator off and then we can clean it hopefully start going back together I don't know what I'm gonna do with the engine insulator I guess maybe I'll hose it off and See if I could like, I don't know, dry it off and make it smell nice. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. And I want to look in some other places too. But uh, yeah, that's it for tonight. All right, guys. So took it a few steps further tonight. I got the blower motor out. Took the side fin panel, the gill panel off. I took out this little crossbar, washer fluid jug, some part of the wheel liner, mud flap, got the heater box out. So this is where it sits right now. I got this whole side of the car apart in addition to the whole interior. Uh, it's just because that's the way it goes. So we're going to see what we can do about removing um, everything else. I, I don't know guys, it's just, this is huge. This is like a, this is the biggest job I've ever taken on I think at home. This is ridiculous. Um, well, you can see our uh, AC evaporator core it has a bunch of crap in it. So I guess I'm kind of glad that I took it apart because that's definitely going to hurt efficiency a little bit. That's not really what I care about, to be honest. But uh, yeah, so this heater box is a huge pain, guys. There are many screws. Uh, I will show you. We got obviously, you know, here, here, a nut here another screw down here and then there's uh, this screw that you got to get from the back side it sits like behind the fuel rail over here huge pain huge pain I'm sorry it's not focused but it comes from the back side and you got to get under the car I have the car jacked up on jack stands over here and I got underneath and I, I just barely got that screw I was like really not fun I, I was probably under the car for 25 minutes getting that one bolt um, and then this one, this one, and this one, and this whole case will pop off. It's kind of gasketed to here, and the whole thing pops off and allows you to get to the uh, evap core. But the heater core I took out last night, uh, some of the gasket looks like it's stuck here, so we'll have to pick that off. I'd like to take the evap core out, and then we'll see if we can get the rest of the box off. I know there's some more difficult bolts to get to um, and stuff like that, but we'll see. We'll see how much of these bolts I put back together because. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is, they make these bolts so hard to get to. I don't understand. But, uh, yeah, so once I pull the evap core out, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I have access. I don't know how to get access to these bolts here um, from the inside, because I think that's what's holding the case on the inside, bolts like these. So I'm going to see about pulling those out. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Just so much. So much to pull apart. It's insane. <laughs> um, and this is all glued, so I don't want to pull this apart. You know, I don't know what's involved in pulling that. So, yeah, we're just going to go as far as we can and do what we can, and that's all we can do. So that right there is the last bolt, I believe, that's holding the heater box in. So I ended up cutting myself an access hole <laughs> because I can't reach that bolt from the outside. 
Maybe it's accessible from the bottom. I don't think so. It's definitely not accessible from the top with the tools that I have. And I couldn't get it from this direction with any amount of swivels. Uh, it's just the angle's wrong. And I wasn't pulling the header. And I'm not pulling the valve cover or any of the EGR tubes. I'm done taking stuff apart, guys. I've taken so much stuff apart. I'm just sick of it. I just want to get this stuff apart and start putting it back together because I'm going to, pretty soon I'm going to lose hope. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you saw that bolt in there. That 110 is the last thing holding on this outer box here. And uh, hopefully the inner box too. And if not, hopefully it'll shed some light on what else is going on in here. So I'll be able to see everything really good. This would be a wonderful time to install headers on this side. Super easy over here. I should uh, think about it. But anyway, yeah, we're going to get that last bolt. And hopefully, just hopefully, this box comes off and out of the back side. This is like the never-ending dash project. So we got our box out. We got the inner box out. And the other piece, too. And I go and I start pulling off some of this firewall insulation here. And I was looking. Just when you think you got it all. Just when you think they're probably not in there. Look at that. Got another nest in there. These guys were just everywhere. That's behind. This is the, the firewall insulator here. They're even in there. So that, they're everywhere. I'm glad I took it down this far because it still would have stunk. I keep saying like, oh, I don't know if we're going to go any further. No, I literally have to gut this car to the sheet metal um, or else it's going to stink. And I got to find out what I'm going to do with this. I may have to get rid of this. That engine insulator is all foam in there. Oh, it's nasty. I don't know what I'm going to do. I may rip it out. My flashlight's dead. I may rip it out and we're trying to replace it with something. I'll price out a new one or look at other options, but it's really unfortunate. I'm going to have to see what this side is looking like, too. Tear that side apart as well. So, yep, that's how it's going, guys. This is just never ending. Let's keep going. All right, guys, so we're coming at this with a fresh brain in the morning. I'm going to get started uh, actually cleaning all the surfaces. I showed you guys last night. I got this firewall insulator out. And I've been thinking about what I'm going to do with this. And I think I'm going to replace it. It's pretty hammered on the bottom. It's like all moldy. Because of the water getting in the car. It has a mouse nest integrated into it. It's kind of deteriorated. I talked to my dad about skinning the whole thing. And using just the rubber. And finding something to replace the, the foam. But looking at this thing, I don't think that's really feasible. So I'm going to replace it. I already ordered something. 24 square feet of material so thing really doesn't have a huge firewall to cover I'll probably cover it better than this thing did with my little pieces but I ordered some material to cover it as a nice heat barrier and sound insulator which is what this stuff does so we should be able to replace it especially since we got that nasty nest in there so the car is all down to the sheet metal now. So I want to kind of get... It still smells in here, but we got some open holes in the firewall. I think once I clean the car out, I'm hoping that smell will go away. And this jute back here too. So I've been thinking about what I'm going to do with the jute to replace it. If I like this stuff, I may use it. Or I'll use something else. But I'm probably going to have to replace most of the jute um, with that firewall insulator that I got. So, also, i got to show you guys the damage down here. Once I get this all cleaned up, I'll try to get these wires out of the way here. And we're going to inspect the damage down there. And that's kind of what we're going to work on today. So, cleaning up the interior and starting to assess the floor pan damage. And see how I can repair that. Um, I have some ideas already. So yeah, that's where we're at today. We're pretty much gutted, guys. We're we're there. Just gotta do maybe up and over, and uh, some other areas. But that's pretty much it. Got the pillars out all the way down to the sheet metal. This is what I had to do. Unfortunately, we had to make our little access hole. 
little hack job over there, but I got it out, got everything out. I know this car is going to go back together, and I know it's clean. Even if it has a slight odor, I know it's clean. I know there's nothing in here that's nasty, because that's just, that grosses me out. I hate mice, guys. I freaking hate them. Nasty little rodent creatures. Ugh. We won't let them come back into this car, that's for sure. I'm definitely going to put some things in place to make sure that doesn't happen. But we'll insulate our tranny tunnel as well so i'll let you guys know when that stuff comes in and we can get to work with that but first we got to fix the floor pan and get this car nice and straight hopefully you guys can tell a difference i've been going at this thing with some bleach so i mixed in a spray bottle some bleach and water and i've just been spraying using like a little brush to agitate i did all up here i did the loom as best i could and then I did the floor pan as well. So, kind of up the walls a little bit. I want to take the speakers, the speaker boxes out and get behind there on both sides. And, uh, yeah. So that's, that's pretty much it. It's pretty well cleaned up, guys. Um, you can see, just looking a lot cleaner than it was. Uh, I did vacuum again. And I'll show you guys the other side too, but... Yeah, I got all the wires bungeed up for now just so I can clean the floor pan. I think I might leave them like that because I got some work to do. This is what the next video is going to be about. I don't know if you can see right there, but uh, that's the driveway. So you can see right through the floor. And it is cracked all the way up here where uh, the dead pedal is here. I don't know if you can see it up here, but it is split. Um, right on that line, the white line that you see there, it's it's cracked and it's it's coming towards us. So it's like seam sealer there or something. So I'm going to have to grind all that out of there and see what we're working with. And we're going to have to reattach that. Um, if we can access that from the back side, we'll try to reinforce from the back side as well. And it kind of goes up a little ways up here, the crack. So we're just going to have to uncover what we what we can and try to fix it on this side and this isn't really even the bad side so both of these sides are like that this car probably got bottomed out right here it whacked the ground or possibly scraped the ground a lot because it's it's more worn away than anything and it definitely took a good impact to crack this whole thing loose um and you it'll it'll actually flex when you push on it this these cars are made of fiberglass so it's kind of hard you know to whack something and not crack something that's kind of the problem but i'll take this out to get better access and this is what probably the next video is going to be about i got some materials ordered um so we're waiting on smc fiberglass epoxy and some other stuff um, to fix this but i've been doing research and i think that that's the correct way to repair it so on this side you can see we have pretty much a gaping hole I'll show you guys the underside of the car too. There's like some stress cracks right here. I think I might just grind that a little bit and we'll just put some epoxy on it. Up here, down here, and yeah, and like right here. I don't think those are an issue. Um, it's not going to take on water because of it, but I'd like to just strengthen it a little bit. And you can see this whole corner was stoved in right here. And because of that, I'm blocking the light. Because of that, it's uh, it's bowed this whole section out. So this whole section is all blown out. And looking from the bottom of the car, you can see <coughs> we got a hole. So yeah, that's what the next video is gonna be about, guys. Um, we got a hole in both sides of the car. So we gotta fix that, obviously. Um, and that's gonna, Help to reduce, obviously, road noise, water getting in, uh, possible animals getting in, and just, you know, make the car right. I mean, that's not right. And other thing I'm looking into is this floor pan damage over here. So I don't know if somebody jacked this car up by the floor pan, which I'm sure is common because people don't know what they're doing. I think they might have jacked it up by here, and they actually pushed up on this. And I wonder if that's why the seat track was jammed. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if I should try to bang it back down. You can see how how sideways these studs are. These studs just they don't look right. So I'm wondering if I should bolt the seat back up and then or the seat 
uh, base and then try to pound it. That way I don't bow the, I don't want the rip the, it to not be square and then I can't bolt the seat back in here because that would be a bummer. So I'm thinking I'll probably bolt the seat in here and then try to bang it down with the seat base in here just to try to fix this floor pan and I'll try to, once I'm done with that, I'll try to re-seam seal because this looks like it's it's peeling up. So I'll cut this out of here because it's probably going to mess up the seam sealer by banging it too. So yeah, we got some uh, body work to do, but at least it's in non-visible areas. I don't have to worry about it being nice and tidy looking. Uh, it just has to be strong. So that's good. And then I got some, like I said, stuff ordered for the firewall. So we're getting to work on it. We're getting there. I'm trying to figure out how long I've actually had the car here. Not that long, but I'm really waiting on getting it registered before I do anything crazy, but I kind of just am all in right now. I got motivation for it, so I don't care. I'll get it registered somehow, some way. We'll figure it out because it's got to happen, guys. This thing's sick. We got to get it back on the road, but I think that's where I'm going to end it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the dash removal. I don't think I did. I think it was probably... Yeah, not one of my favorite experiences. We'll just say that. But now, I think the worst of it's over. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I think that out with the old and with the new. And uh, we just it gives me reassurance knowing that this car is clean. And I don't have to worry about anything. Um, I just don't like the, the idea of living amongst rodents in this car and the smell I just hate the smell I gotta clean all these frame rails and everything I mean they use the frame rails as like a highway guys they were just running along the frame of this thing so yeah we're gonna get them out of here we're evicting the mice we're taking over and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more Corvette content and Accord content the Avalanche needs some love the Civic Tahoe, the whole fleet, okay? <laughs> anyway, I'm uh, biting off more than I can chew with all these projects, but we're going to knock them out one at a time, and uh, eventually they'll all be done, because I, I like to finish stuff, <laughs> even if it takes me years, like this thing did. But uh, I hope this one won't take that long. I'm dragging it out, though, so peace. Thanks for watching.